Paul Ryan walking back his endorsement a bit yesterday, not withdrawing it completely. Yeah, correct. Why not, given what we've seen here? Well, I think I, Paul Ryan is making a calculation, uh, which was really clear in his in conference call with, with House Republicans yesterday, and that is he knows he's torn between his personal feelings towards this and his job as the leader of the Republican caucus within the House. And his view has always been that his responsibility is to make sure that the Republicans keep that majority in, in, in Congress. And so uh, I think his calculation is uh, fraught with complications. Mm. But uh, in the end, he seems to be uh, making it very clear that personally he disapproves of the Republican nominee, but giving the, the caucus an option to do what he says, whatever is best for your district, and kind of wiping his hands clean of it in some ways, not really, not disendorsing Donald Trump, but kind of handing it over to his members and saying, you need to do what's best for you, but like what's best for everybody is that the Republicans keep control of the Congress. That's his opinion. Well, speaking of Paul Ryan not exactly making a decision, who comes out of this whole fray with any credibility left on the GOP side? <laughs> well, I... The, the, the thing with Donald Trump is that just months ago, he was making these really uh, bold claims that I don't need the Republican Party. I'm a different sort of candidate. I can win on my own. They, they can endorse me if they want, but I can, you know, I'm going to charge forward and I can win without their help. Today, we're seeing a very different message coming from the Republican nominee, which is he just tweeted these things about Paul Ryan, and he said it's really hard to do well when your party's not behind you. And so you start to, th you start to see signs. He's been talking, uh, he's been kind of floating these ideas about a rigged election for some time now, but you're starting to see him build a case for excuses where if he loses in November, he has th people to blame, and Paul Ryan looks like one of the ones on the on his list. We've got a headline here crossing the Bloomberg right now. Senator Marco Rubio, Florida, former Republican candidate, saying he continues to support uh, Donald Trump. When you look at the kind of defections we have seen, and there have been some, uh, some people pulling their endorsements of Donald Trump, uh, have we reached a point where that stopped? Have they stanched that bleeding, or are there more to come, do you think? Um, I think at the moment he, he has stopped it where it, where it was. Now, there's been a lot of damage done, and you have people like even Chris Christie, who is still supporting uh, Donald Trump in the way that Marco Rubio and uh, and Paul Ryan have said. Uh, even Chris Christie, one of his closest allies, the guy who's running his transition team, said the apology didn't go far enough, uh, that he wished Don Donald Trump hadn't said the things that he said, and that he in no way is going to defend him. He, he and others are saying, we can't. We don't condone this. We don't approve of it. We're going to dis, uh, denounce it in every way. Sh the things that he said in every way, shape, and form. But that this election is about bigger things, mm -hmm. and I and I imagine that's the same sort of thing Marco Rubio is going to try to talk about. Does he have any money left? Does he have any do donors on well, his side? Yeah, we'll have to see. Um, uh, Spencer Zwick came out pretty strongly right after the video came and said that uh, and, and signaled that uh, that donors were going to start closing their wallets to Donald Trump. Um, we'll have to see. We haven't seen any of those numbers yet. We'll be watching it closely.